In this episode of Toxicity Test, we're going to look at dermal penetration, which is also known as skin absorption. These first four slides are taken from the Alltox website. This first slide gives us a definition of dermal penetration. It reads, Dermal penetration testing, also known as percutaneous penetration, measures the absorption or penetration of a substance through the skin barrier and into the skin. Dermal penetration studies are conducted to determine how much of a chemical penetrates the skin and thereby whether it has the potential to be absorbed into the systemic circulation. That's the blood circulation, one imagines. Dermal penetration is considered to occur by passive diffusion. However, biotransformation of the test substance within the skin metabolism prior to systemic absorption can occur. The last part means that if you put a chemical on your skin, the time it goes through your skin into the blood system, it can actually change into another chemical. I know that the liver had the ability to do this, but I never knew that the skin did. This next slide gives us some information on the in vivo and in vitro methods. It reads, both in vivo and in vitro methods are available for determining the percutaneous penetration of a substance. Selection of the method used may result in obtaining different types of information, variations in accuracy of the results and relevance of the test results to humans. Another factor in the selection of an in vivo versus in vitro test system may be the preference of the National Regulatory Authority. The in vitro dermal penetration test methods are considered advantageous to the in vivo tests in the EU. Some US agencies have accepted in vitro dermal penetration data. However, they have not formally accepted the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development's test guideline TG428 skin absorption in vitro method. This slide specifically talks about the animal test, which is OECD TG427. It reads, the rat is the most common species used for in vivo dermal penetration testing. The in vivo method for determining the penetration of a substance through the skin of an animal and into the systemic compartment is described in the OECD TG427. One or more doses of the test material, usually a radioactive labelled sample, are applied to the shaved skin of an animal for a specified time. The time and dose are based on expected human exposure. The animals are then observed at regular intervals for signs of toxicity and daily excreta, and sometimes even expired air, are measured for the test substance. Blood is collected periodically and when the animal is euthanized, distribution of the test substance is measured in tissue samples from the application site and the body. Then the results can be reported as the rate amount or percentage of skin absorption. The animal test method is considered advantageous for the generation of systemic, kinetic and metabolic information. Systemic kinetic and metabolic information. Systemic kinetic means the movement of the drug around the body, i.e. where does it end up, like its motion. And metabolic information means has it changed its formation or not, or has it stayed what it was when it was first applied to the skin. This slide describes some of the realities of working with the in vitro dermal penetration method. One of the advantages of the in vitro dermal penetration method should be that you don't get interspecies differences. However, for this to happen, you have to have a tightly standardized test. This slide reads, in vitro dermal penetration methods are widely used. Picking the correct protocol is what is confusing. To promote the development of standardized protocols and better agreement of in vitro dermal permeation methods, 
The Institute for In Vitro Scientists hosted a workshop for a small group of international stakeholders in 2005 to discuss the OECD guidance and to make recommendations on implementing specific aspects of the guidance. Recommendations from this meeting are summarised in a poster available on the IIVS website and include items such as selection of the skin model and receptor fluid, best practices for storing frozen skin, barrier integrity assessment methods and more. Additional suggestions by the workshop participants were that human skin be considered the gold standard, that in vitro data be submitted to regulatory agencies to promote its acceptance, and that some mechanism be developed for sharing among stakeholders the responses of regulatory agencies to submitted in vitro data. This is the first time we've come across the term gold standard. In the literature, the gold standard is always regarded as the in vivo animal tests. However, the in vivo animal tests suffer from interspecies differences and therefore don't really warrant the term gold standard. Gold standard should really be applied to in vitro tests that have been validated and have been shown to be accurate in the prediction of human outcomes. This slide shows the front of the OECD test 427 skin absorption in vivo method. Part 2 of the introduction reads, A substance must cross a large number of cell layers of the skin before it can reach the circulation. The rate determining layer for most substances is the stratum corneum, consisting of dead cells. Permeability through the skin depends on the lipophysicity of the chemical, that's how well it dissolves in fat, and the thickness of the outer layers of epidermis, as well as on factors such as molecular weight and concentrations of the substance. In general, the skin of rats and rabbits is more permeable than that of humans, whereas the skin permeability of guinea pigs, pigs and monkeys is more similar to that of humans. This slide shows the front cover of the OECD test 428 skin absorption in vitro method. Under initial considerations, number two, it reads the methods for measuring skin absorption and dermal delivery can be divided into two categories, in vivo and in vitro. In vivo methods on skin absorption are well established and provide pharmacokinetic information in a range of animal species. An in vivo method is separately described in another OECD guideline. In vitro methods have also been used for many years to measure skin absorption. Although formal validation studies of the in vitro methods covered by this test guideline have not been performed, OECD experts agreed in 1999 that there was sufficient data evaluated to support the in vitro test guideline. Further details that substantiate this support, including a significant number of direct comparisons of in vitro and in vivo methods, are provided with the guidance document. These next two slides are taken from the Autox website. This first slide reads, QSAR models, which are predictive computational models based on molecular structure, have been developed to assess the skin permeability of drugs and chemicals. Many models have been developed and a reassessment of the statistical relevance of existing models suggested that heterogeneity in the data used to develop the models, i.e. skin origin and experimental conditions, contributes to their variance. So you can see at the moment the QSAR models aren't very good because of the differences in the data used to develop the models i.e. the data that we put into the QSAR models has to be much more standardised. If not, you're just going to get this variance that they talk about. So at the moment, the QSAR models are probably not the best way to predict outcome. This is the last slide from the Autox website and its title is Validation Acceptance of Non-Animal Alternative Methods. 
The first line reads, Dermal penetration studies using in vitro skin preparations are broadly used without formal validation. The first paragraph reads, the OECD guidance document for the conduct of skin absorption studies states that skin absorption is primarily a passive process and studies undertaken using appropriate in vitro experimental conditions have produced data for a wide range of chemicals that demonstrate the usefulness of this method. Such methods have found use in, for example, comparing delivery of chemicals into and through skin from different formulations and can also provide useful models for the assessment of risk due to percutaneous absorption in humans. The second paragraph reads, Non-animal methods for dermal penetration are not being formally validated, but the in vitro methods described by OECD TG428 have been accepted by EU authorities. US agencies have not formally acknowledged acceptance of the in vitro percutaneous penetration methods, described by OECD 428, but there are anecdotal reports of in vitro methods being accepted by some US agencies. The final paragraph reads, although not a formal validation study, an inter-laboratory assessment of in vitro skin absorption methods was conducted in which three compounds were tested in ten laboratories using standardised protocols. Some variability in the results was reported, but the in vitro methods were considered to be robust. Nine labs used human skin and it was concluded that variation observed may be largely attributed to human variability in dermal absorption and the skin source. One lab used rat skin which was more permeable than human skin to caffeine but similar for benzoic acid and testosterone. The last two slides come from the Canadian Council on Animal Care which you can see in front of you. In this first slide you can see on the left hand column the conventional test method, skin absorption in vivo method OECD TG427. In the next column it gives the alternative test which is the skin absorption in vitro method. In the third column it gives the validation status and it says OECD endorsed as equivalent to validated. In the fourth column it says regulatory status and under EU it says regulatory accepted as dermal percutaneous absorption test for the REACH program in place of in vivo animal studies. And in the column under effect or potential effect on animal use it says replacement when human skin is used or reduction and refinement when skin from humanely killed animals is used. This very last slide gives a description of the alternative method. It reads skin absorption in vitro method. The test substance is applied to the surface of an exercise skin sample which sits between two chambers, a donor chamber and a receptor chamber of a diffusion cell. The receptor fluid is sampled at various time points and analysed for the test chemical and or metabolites. Analysis of material remaining in the skin layers and material washed off the skin allows for further data evaluation. Skin from human or animal sources can be used, although viable skin is preferred, non-viable skin can also be used. Under validation status, it says, as we've just seen, endorsed as equivalent to validated. And under regulatory status, it says, EU regulatory accepted as dermal percutaneous absorption test for the REACH program in place of in vivo animal studies.